Hi there, Virgos. Welcome to your end of the month December reading. So this de December reading is going to run from December 17th until the end of the month, December 31st. And um, I have to condense it into two weeks, mainly because I'm going to be very busy next week and I won't be able to do the weekly readings for you guys. So I'm hoping to get these out early. And that's why we're doing two weeks instead of one week. And by January, I should have time and I'll revert back to the weeklies, okay? Um, when I was shuffling out this spread, I saw a really interesting image. Um, so I see this person. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing almost like you, I'm seeing almost things through your eyes. You're looking at this person. And I see a guy, he's like in his 30s, and um, he's talking to you. He's, he's like, you know, just talking. It's, it's almost like a monologue. He's just talking about his day and about himself. And uh, I see you putting on, first of all, a pair of glasses. And so you, I, I see you putting on a pair of glasses. And the first pair is a pair of x-ray glasses where you're looking at him. And you see him, and then through the lens of the x-ray glasses, you're seeing him as a skeleton. You know, so you're seeing his bones, you're seeing like some, the outlines of some of the internal organs. And then you're thinking to yourself, wrong, wrong lens, like wrong glasses, wrong pair of glasses. And then you put that, you take that one off and then you put on another one. And the whole time you're doing this, the guy is just talking. And you put on another pair. And this pair, it's like a heat sensor type of glasses. So you're seeing his heart and his heart looks really cold like it, it's it's like blue which means you know there isn't a lot of blood circulating there and then you're seeing like other areas of him like around his head it's really hot which means you know he's probably just he's probably lying I feel because I just feel like he's flustered or everything like the blood is rushing to his head so he's like making up stories and in the meantime you're doing all of this he keeps talking okay he keeps it's like once again a monologue so when I saw that I was thinking you know Virgos you guys are probably dealing with people who might be you know narcissistic they love to talk about themselves or they only care about themselves. It's not like they're taking the time to ask you, you know, hey, how was your weekend? What did you do? Did you get into anything fun? How are you feeling? Is there anything I can help you with? No, the, the person is just, you know, sitting there engaging in a monologue and you're seeing right through it. You're seeing right through it. Um, so for those of you who are, you know, newly dating, I, I see this as potentially um, going on dates and, and, and trying to get to know somebody and then you find out that they're all fluff, okay? Um, so unfortunately, that's what I'm seeing. It doesn't mean that, you know, that you should stop and, and not date and, you know, sequester yourself. But I feel like for those of you who are dating in general, uh, online dating, dating, doing speed dating, meeting people, going on blind dates, whatever you're doing, you're going to see right through people's BS. You're going to be able to gauge people where they're at, how self-interested they are and how narcissistic they are or whether or not they're, they're true with their intentions when it comes to you, okay? And then whatever story they conjure up, whatever capacity or, or in whatever capacity you're dealing with them, it could be speed dating, it could be online dating, it could be work, it could be family as well. I see a lot of people engaging in work where you have to where you have to let people talk so that they slip up and they review pertinent information. So you could be in law enforcement, you could be uh, interrogating somebody, you could be uh, interviewing somebody. And um, I, I see interviews, interviewing somebody, and then they slip up and they, 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 um, they reveal the, some part of um, like, a, they, they trip up on their lies, or you know, you start to see inconsistent um, stories, you know, so so things like that. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm picking up. Um, if you are out there dating, you're going to be able to see through, you know, people's facade. You're going to be able to essentially uh, eliminate very early on people who are just self-absorbed, okay? But I, I do see a large amount of people around you who are just so wrapped up in themselves, who are so self-absorbed and so narcissistic. 
and you're going to be able to screen these out these people out early and you're not going to give them you know or engage with them too much okay um so the energy for this reading it is all about discernment it's all about you know using that virgoin trait the virgoin eye for detail to your advantage and not letting anything fool you, not letting anybody fool you, not letting anybody, even though they come in, you know, very articulate, they're, they're dressed in a suit or they're dressed in a tie or they're, they're, they just look phenomenal and they look really clean. Don't let that facade fool you. Be able to ask follow-up questions or just let people talk and let them slip up. And I also feel as well, you know, this is, um, the next two weeks is about discernment where you know who your allies are, you know who your friends are, you know who has your best interests at heart, and you know who's only there to look out for themselves. So I've been seeing this a lot uh, recently for Virgo and people. And I, I almost feel like, you know, um, you might be dealing with friends, co-workers, friends, you do a lot for them. You, when you consider somebody your friend, when you consider somebody that you know you, you you would do a lot for them. You would drive lar um, like, you would drive. Oh my gosh, I I'm so sorry. I'm not able to get the words. You would, um, you would cross oceans to go see them for their birthday, for example. You would cover large distances, vast distances to be there when they need you, when they need you for something and you consider them a friend in their distress, you would go out of your way to, you know, be there for them, no matter the distance, no matter the time. They could call you at, you know, 3 a.m. and you've got like an early meeting the next day and they have a flat tire and they're stranded on the road. You definitely would be there for them without question. And um, I feel like, you know, some people might not be worthwhile Okay, because if the shoe were on the other foot, you know, would they wake up at three to come get you if you have a flat tire? You would never ask because you don't want to inconvenience the other person. You would never do that to another person. You're all about self-sufficiency and you're all about being thoughtful and considerate of other people's time. And, you know, even if you're stranded on the freeway and you're scared and there's nobody around, you have a flat tire... You're not going to call somebody and inconvenience them to help you come out and, you know, um, keep you company or help you tow your car or help you change a flat tire. That is something you don't do because you are very, very considerate of other people, especially not at 3 a.m. And so you've seen these types of behavior, opportunistic behaviors in other people. And... Um, I just feel like a lot of it has been revealed very recently. A lot of it has been revealed very recently and it, it made you angry, I feel. And in some instances, it's not like, I honestly feel like it, it didn't surprise you. It didn't surprise you the the level to which people stoop, you know, it, it didn't surprise you because in, in a way you can discern it, you can see through the facade, you already know that they're opportunistic. But it's just the fact that they pretend like nothing happened, it's just the fact that they go about their day as if, you know, what they did was okay and was acceptable. So I, I just feel like I don't even know what to think. So I feel like this is, you know, just one of those things that you're like, okay, that, that's just human nature. I'm going to, it's like water under the bridge. I'm going to move away and I'm not going to counter bad behavior or bad attitudes or those type of self-serving uh, actions with, I'm, I'm not going to stoop to their level pretty much. So I definitely see you rising above it. And I definitely see you guys setting a good example for other people by not doing what they're doing. 
setting a good example, which is really, really good for you guys. And honestly, it's going to bring about good karma for you if you're able to elevate yourself and not get yourself bogged down and, you know, fight fire with fire or uh, retaliate, you know, it, it's like you're, you're rising above it. You're not going to stoop to their level. And I just want to say as well, this is not directed at you. Whatever behavior you're seeing in other people, it's not like, you know, they think you're stupid and they're lying to you. No, don't take it personally. It's not like they see you as someone who's hardworking and so they dump responsibilities on you. No, it, it's not personal. They do this with everybody. Okay, and that's just the nature of someone who's narcissistic and that's just the nature of someone who's opportunistic. So don't take it personally and just water under the bridge. Don't engage with them. Don't, um, I want to say as well, and, and I don't know why this came out, but don't hate them because it's not personal. Okay, don't give them that energy. Don't give them that time of day. Don't dwell on it. Don't hate on them or don't hate them. Don't hold on to that resentment because it's not supposed to be personal. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Because I just feel like this is just a bump in the road. We're here to deal with and learn from many, many people. Some of these lessons could be difficult. Some of these lessons could be really good and uplifting. And so it's just a bump in the road. It's just the way um, life works. Okay? And the fact that you're rising above it and the fact that you're not you know, you're going to do what you're going to do, regardless of what other people around you do. It's going to give you a sense of peace, a sense of purpose, a sense of like, I'm on the right track. Because look at me, highly elevated, and look at this other person down in the dumps. So I feel like that alone is confirmation that, you know, don't take it personally, don't hold on to the resentment, don't give it the energy and don't give them the time of day like don't let them occupy your thoughts because once again it's not supposed to be personal okay um, and the reason I feel like I dwelled I dwelled on that for like 12 minutes here is because I feel in the past you have really taken things very personally that's what I'm feeling like in every work environment, you guys are the workaholics and everyone sees that. Everyone sees you as being really hardworking, um, very competent. Like you get things done in a very quick, swift manner because you have a good system, you have a good process. And so they give you, you know, responsibilities and then you, you resent it and you like, you hold on to a lot of resentment about people. And um, I stopped seeing that around the summertime this year. I stopped seeing that. And I also feel like I stopped seeing people dumping responsibilities on you. Okay? And I, I feel like a lot of it has to do with this paradigm shift that you guys have undergone. Where you're just like, I'm not going to fight fire with fire. I'm just going to do my thing. And, you know, people are going to live their lives. And so I'm going to learn to detach a little bit and just let people be. Just let people be. Um, I also see some people in here. If you're dealing with someone who's younger than you, it could be a sibling. It could be a child. It could be nieces, nephew, whoever it is. You're learning to love in a more detached manner. So if you have been obsessively monitoring what they eat, excessively monitoring, you know, what they're doing on social media, what they're doing, looking at on the internet, um, how their school work is, who their friends are, you're learning to detach. You're learning to not overstep your boundaries. And you're learning to just like, I'm going to let it be. I'm just going to let it be. I'm going to give them, you know, the space to make the right decisions. And if they don't listen to me, I'm not going to take it personally either. So I, I see this, you know, major alleviation of stress for you. Your, I see your energy opening up. I see your energy opening up. And I see you not trying to control situations. Okay? 
I see you like letting yourself breathe, letting yourself as well, letting other people breathe. Okay. Um, so based on the spread, this is really jumping out at me. It's almost like glistening. We have a new job coming into the picture. So we have here the Ace of Pentacles. This is a big, 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 big opportunity. So promotion, uh, pay increase, uh, literally a job, a new job for you guys. I feel like, I feel like where you are, you're very, very happy. You're very, very content. And I feel like you want a change of scenery. And so this opportunity is coming in. It's a step up, but I feel like it's just a change of scenery. Okay, where you are, you might be like this. You get along with a lot of people. And I feel like you might be in a work environment that is um, a little bit stagnant. Not that this is not a good card. This card indicates stability. But, you know, I, I'm drawn to this old man. He's been there for a very, very long time. He runs the show or he or she runs the, sh the show. And then, you know, they're in charge of bringing other people in that they know. So there is an environment here where I feel... It might be a little bit outdated. It might be very stable and very slow to change. And you want a more innovative environment. So you're shifting from here into this Ace of Pentacles, which is the outdoors, which is a new, possibly a colder climate, possibly a bigger climate. There's a lot more freedom here. So I, I feel like there is a, a new job on the offing for many of you. And... Um, I feel like you've been looking. I feel like you've been looking far and wide. You've been taking everything into consideration. Um, you know, wanting to move back with family, wanting to be closer to family, wanting, you know, kind of like deciding the whole gamut. What city do I want to be in? What is the cost of living? How much is an apartment? Um, is it a, a, a public transit friendly city? Do I need a car? Do I like the climate? You've been looking at a lot of options. You've been looking at a lot of opportunities, looking at a lot of options. And I have here the Seven of Cups, options falling away, okay? So in the reverse, it's indicating to me that, you know, something is meant for you. You've done your research. And so whatever you're aiming for, whatever you're shooting for, especially if it's a new job, a promotion, or something similar, it's going to come into the picture, towards the end of this year and I feel like it's, it's, you know, conjuring magic. This is something that is meant for you and I feel like it, it definitely, you can start over. You feel like you have a new chance, a new opportunity, a clean slate, you can start over and you feel like you're in an environment where people are a little bit more innovative, where people are a little bit more accountable for their actions. So if the previous work environment you know, people are kind of like grandfathered in, uh, they're into, they're, they get into a position because, not because of their merit, but because of their seniority, because they've been around forever, and um, they kind of slack off, or, you know, they're just a little bit outdated, not keeping up with new technology, not keeping up with new rules and regulations and policies and protocols. The new environment is going to be more innovative. It's going to be a lot better. I feel like it's going to free you up. Okay. Um, so I, I feel like you're going to be quite happy. And um, I see you accepting this or taking it without, without like, uh, without a second thought. Okay, there's no doubt in your mind that this is the right choice. And so we have here quick, swift action that's coming in being very decisive. Because once again, the choices are being eliminated. The options are falling away. The false options are falling away. So you're going to be very decisive here. Ace of Swords. I see higher elevation. So I don't know where you are, but I see you going to a place with a lot of terrain, higher elevation, a lot of opportunities for outdoorsy things, a lot of beautiful scenery, fresh air, and just um, you're going to feel really happy and you're going to feel so free. Some of you might be moving to a coastal area or longing to move to a coastal area, wanting like a bigger uh, backyard, wanting, you know, to be one with nature, wanting an environment that is less congested and just um, higher elevation. 
so that's that's what I'm seeing and um, I feel for many of you for the next two weeks you might be doing a lot of, a lot of outdoorsy things you know I see people going on hikes I see people going like on uh, almost like a safari but um, not so much a safari because I still feel more colder temperate climate so Possibly doing some sightseeing where there are wild animals as well, like going to a, a, a national forest, a nature preserve, or something like that. Um, and, you know, just to decompress. And if you are starting a new job, I see you taking some time off to really enjoy a vacation before you uh, commit to the new job. Okay, but either way, I feel like you're being, um, you're deciding on something for the next two weeks and you're being very definitive that this is the right path for me I'm gonna go forward all the signs are pointing in the right direction um, so that's what I'm feeling coming through I, I, I feel like there might have been some relationships that that have kinda of gone south okay some relationships that might have gone south for some of you this could be co-workers bosses and um, I feel like you have somebody that you really really like and you had your blinders on so you might have a crush on them and or you might have your um, you know you might really admire them because they're in a powerful position and then over time the blinders come off and you know you you put on the, the the right pair of glasses and you're seeing them through the right lens and you're just like wow this person has fallen from their pedestal in my eyes at least because you know they're engaging in behaviors that are not honorable or they behave they're behaving in a way that is very opportunistic um i see bosses i see family members and then I also see co-workers. I also see like, um, for those of you who are contemplating a big move, there's somebody that you might have waited on, you know, like, um, are the feelings reciprocated? I really like this person, do they like me? And I feel like, you know, there is a shyness about you where you don't tell the person how you feel. And I see more of a platonic energy coming through from their end. And so they might just, you know, want to keep things platonic. And I feel like you're getting confirmation of that. And so you're trying, you know, to leave this behind and move forward. So let me see. There's one last thing I want to look at. There's a next venture that you're in, you're moving into, so a new venture, okay, a new location, new venture, something new that you're starting up. We have here the this is the Knight of Pentacles, slowest moving knight in the deck. You're deliberating, you're doing your research, you're studying as well, and you're trying to you know you're you're trying to get everything lined up or everything situated before you make that physical move. So for some of you, this could be just be working out the logistics, okay? So for example, if you're taking a trip, you're planning the route, you're planning the trip, you're planning airfare, you're planning the hotels and all the accommodations. For others, if this is a move, you're thinking about the logistics. And what I feel you're headed towards is here's a state of like, I'm making the right choice. It is really important for you to tune out other people's ideas, other people's advice, and other people's, um, what other people have to say, okay? And really listen to your inner calling and your inner voice. Because I feel like everything is converging and it's guiding you towards the right direction where you're meant to be. And it's the people around you that, you know, they're stuck in their ways, they're stagnant, and they're afraid of change. And so you tell them you're implementing this new move, they're going to tell you, they're, they're going to give you a lot of doubts. They're, whatever they say is going to tell, it's like from a place of fear and they might try to hold you back or they might tell you, I don't think that's a good idea. And so it might make you question whether or not you're on the right track. And so listen to your own intuition. And I feel like you are divinely guided here. 
this is something you definitely have been weighing out the pros and the cons about for a very long time. Okay? Angels are like immortal. So I, I almost feel like you've been thinking about this for a really, really, really long time. And hence, you've ran through the whole scenario, multiple scenarios. And that's why you know this is something that you want to do. So don't let the naysayers and don't let people detract you from what you want to do. Okay? Um, Virgos, that is all that I have for you. Um, the energy is definitely a lot freer. So I'm really happy to see that for you. And um, I feel like, you know, the, the next two weeks, there are a lot of things that you're taking care of. I don't see you being super busy. I see you, you know, engaging with people that matter to you. And uh, it's going to be okay. If you're doing, I, I would recommend to, um, you know, doing more outdoorsy things, getting out in nature, getting some fresh air, getting... A new perspective is what I'm sensing. Getting a new perspective, okay? So going back to that image that I saw where you're looking through, you know, multiple glasses. Maybe you don't have to do that. Maybe you just need to look at things through a fresh pair of eyes. And that requires you kind of getting yourself out there and just kind of scan the horizon. Get a panoramic view so that you see a whole situation. And you don't have to rely on these, you know glasses to you don't have to you know assess things through these lens okay getting a little bit more of a holistic bird's eye view of a situation would be better for you so go out in nature and you know just spend some time marveling at the beauty of the landscape marveling at the beauty of nature I feel like it's going to clear your head and it's going to give you a lot of clarity okay um, I wish you all the best Virgos take care of yourself have a wonderful holiday season and I'll talk to you in January I should be um, I shouldn't be too busy in January so I should be able to do the normal weeklies okay take care bye bye